Are you looking for hope, humor, and help along this crazy journey called life? If so, then this podcast is for you. As a homeschooling mom of five, I went from a depressed coffee addict to a passionate storyteller, and I want you to know that there is more to life than what you can always see. I'm your host, Melanie Gall, and on this show, you'll gain tools to create the life you want, cultivate who you are made to be, and celebrate just how far you've come on this messy road. I praise the Lord that He isn't done with any of us yet, and the truth is, because of Him, we are sustained in the middle. Good morning. Welcome back to another episode of Sustained in the Middle. I want to start by saying I am so grateful for you. Thank you for always being here. We have now reached 14 countries around the world, which I am absolutely amazed by. Praise the Lord for what he is doing through this podcast. I have a new course coming up called Dating in December. This is for anybody who is premarital all the way up to, I'm sure, age 90. Some things we just keep going around and around and around in our marriages, wondering why does she always do that and why do I always think this and why do we always fight about this? Dating in December is super fantastic to get into the nitty gritty of what it is that causes you to tick. I'm going to go through why Jesus made marriage. What is it that makes marriage so hard? Did you know that 70% of conflict is actually unresolvable? 70%. If that's the case, what are we supposed to do about that? (laughs) I'm going to go into what was your role as a kid and that you probably brought that into your marriage. Do you know what that is? How do you relate to God because of that? How does your spouse relate to God? We see things in a different lens, and are we able to see from their perspective all the things that you wish you would have known before you got married, and now I'm offering you this chance to be able to join the webinar. It's three Tuesdays in December, 98 bucks for the three hours, 8 till 9 p.m. Eastern. So excited about it. So today I'm going to continue on in what Adam Young calls the big six. These are the foundational stones for developmentally healthy childhood. We looked at attunement a couple of weeks ago, and now we're going to look at access. What is access? Well, it is the ability, right, or permission to approach, enter, or speak with, or use. So essentially... Can we get the attention of this person? I remember when we brought the twins home and our middle daughter, well, she had a really hard time with it. She always was looking for ways to get our attention. And this was mainly, mostly in the middle of the night. Looking back and even while I was writing this, I cry at what proceeded to happen during those years. I would be up for hours and hours a night trying to feed and rock and change and burp the babies, change and feed and rock them some more, all the while pumping milk for later. I would finally just get to sleep and our older daughter would come out of her bed and want to snuggle in mine. I just couldn't do it. And she was extraordinarily persistent. After multiple times of putting her back into her own bed, The next time she could come in, I would legit just turn my back on her. I cut off access. The only thing she was longing for was me and my heart and my attention. And I removed any possibility of her getting it. I was there physically, but not emotionally or mentally. That's even worse than going away in distance. My poor girl. I was so consumed with what it was that I needed at that moment that I had nothing to give. But perhaps I didn't even have the tools to know what to give in that moment. And that's probably like most of us. If you've ever felt this from your parents, maybe that's what they were going through too. There are some people that I work with, uh, one girl in particular named McCove Johnson, and she is a childhood um, emotional neglect trauma therapist and there are a few signs that maybe this type of thing has happened to you over and over and over again and it's affecting you now like if you numb out or if you cut off your own feelings 
If you feel like maybe something's missing, but you're not quite sure what it is, you're feeling hollow inside, you're easily overwhelmed or discouraged, you have low self-esteem, maybe you're a perfectionist, you have a pronounced sensitivity to rejection, and you lack clarity regarding others' expectations. You know, being aware of these things is important. Often I get people saying that they don't need coaching. And although I completely understand and respect, if this is you, you've said this, why you would say it, inside, truthfully, I'm actually saying you're just not ready. They're just not ready, and that's okay. I know that there's a lot of fears that come with the thought of entering into coaching. There's questions like, well, what if coaching brings up things from my past? Well, what good is that? Well, yeah, (laughs) it probably will. And working through those things will take work. There's war to do. But why should we do the work? The thing is, we want to exile parts about us that we don't want to see or that we don't want to feel. We don't want to get to know those places because they bring us pain. But it wasn't always like this. If we go all the way back to the garden, we were made to be naked in front of each other. Open and available not just between each other, but between us and the Lord. Genesis 2.25, Adam and Eve were naked and they felt no shame. They were whole, loved, trusted. They were safe with each other. I want that again as much as I can while here on this earth. And I want this for my kids and their kids. That's why I want to do the work and I would urge you to do the work. But I get it. Genesis 2 happened and it was beautiful. And then Genesis 3 happened, the fall. Now we live in a broken world with hurt and lots of shame. As you start to look at your story, what things cause you to want to cut off access to your partner, to your kids? Shame and trauma are connected. So that's something to keep in mind that when we cut off access, it's actually pinpointing us to the deeper root of something that's happened to us or a lie that we have believed about ourselves for way too long. We get so used to the propensity to hide that we don't want to even attempt to not to. We also tend to cut off access, not just to our spouse or not just to our kids, but to Jesus. Maybe we believe he's cut off access to us, depending on our actions or our shame surrounding who we are. I just really want to urge you that you are loved And there's some truths here that I want to show you and and provide for you. Ephesians 2.18, that through him, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. We have access to him. In Ephesians 3.12, in him we have boldness. We can be confident and access through faith Jesus. Hebrews 10.19, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, it does take faith, and we rely on the Lord to walk us through these deep places of hurt. But He wants you to come to Him. He's provided this access so that once we go to Him, then we can go to others, and we can open our hearts and open ourselves up to what it is that the Lord has in store for us all of the goodness that he's promised to us. It's just a little bit of a snippet of what access means in our stories. I pray that as you take a look a little bit deeper today into your story, that the God of our universe, of our hearts, of our souls would mend you, would heal you, would hold you. I love you so much. That's what he says to us. Would you welcome him today? Would you open access to your heart? Would you open your heart to other people? I know it's scary, but when we do the work, it's so, so good. Talk to you soon. 